13, I think, or 12. In Holland? Yeah, so... Back when we could still do stuff in Amsterdam? Back when High Times was really cool. Back when it was actually fun in Holland? A long time ago? Yeah. So I think the first year we met was 2012. We had booths across from each other at High Times. Swerve had the biggest, biggest, amazing, crazy booth with like 30 people uh -huh. working it. And Loud Seeds was this little booth right across from it with, I think, four of us. And they had a microphone. They had Hap on the, on the microphone Wait, back in the day. And that was it? Where was that here? That was no, in that Amsterdam. Was in Amsterdam. Was in yeah, you, you had a big ass was booth it, over there. It wasn't the milk bag. It was. No, it not, not, it wasn't. Yeah, it be, no, no, it was the no, one that was outside the, the city zone? a little ways. It's power zone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah power yeah. zone. That was a cool venue. Wild. So we've sat on panels before. We hung out in Amsterdam. One time we even hung out in Amsterdam, and I was talking to Swerve, and he was like, so I heard someone was saying you talk shit about me. And I literally got a text at the same exact time, and it was like, I heard, I heard Swerve's pissed at you, and fucking he's talking shit about you. And it's like... That kind of stuff went on back in the day a lot. Um, the drama from, that was like the early days of Instagram. Right. High school drama. It was even more crazy than <laughs> high school drama. The marijuana industry. Yeah. The marijuana industry and a lot of guys acting like kids. And isn't, it, isn't it funny though how more people took offense to stuff like that than actually worrying about the simple fact of we're doing something extremely illegal and we have to worry about the cops, but we're more worried about the other person that was like, hey, your cuts are really bad. Like, Really? You're worried about the cuts or the seeds, but you're not worried about the fact that everything we do is 100% illegal and we're actually like breaking the law to do this? Yeah. That's not, that's a weird, weird thought now that I think about it. How lucky the modern day grower is, right? The modern day generation. They, had, they don't even have to experience the stuff we had to, to get to this point. It was like bizarre world in some ways back then too. I know, it's kind of wild to see like you guys were talking, how you have like, you know, some of the, you know, like some of the, like I was saying, some of those people that are placing the orders, and you're like, oh, yeah, we need 100,000 seeds, or we need a million seeds. And it's like, wait a second, a million? Are you going to grow all of those seeds? And I'm like, yeah, we've got a land, and we're going to grow all that. And you're like, wait a second here. Yeah, I mean, some <laughs> of these companies are stockpiling seeds. I heard a specific company bought 5 million autoflower seeds this year. And then I was like, they must have a lot of land. It's got to be crazy. We got to get in on it. We got to sell some seeds. Yeah. And it turns out that they're stockpiling those seeds. So it's not like they're they're burning through that every year. That's so I think big companies are getting ready to go online, and they want to have stockpile, and they have tons of money. Uh, that that was never a thing back in the day. No, a million never. seeds, like maybe fifty thousand seeds. If you're lucky. Yeah. Or a kilo of seeds was kilo, like a big baby. deal. Yeah. You get a kilo of seeds. You're like, yeah, thirty-three thousand seeds, forty thousand seeds. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Well, and seeds change. You know, depending on the cultivar, you can have small seeds. You can have big seeds. They can weigh anywhere as small as like like point zero one two of a gram to point. Uh, yeah, point zero. Yeah, it's yeah, a point, point two, point, point two, two point five. Three, yeah. I've seen some monsters. Uh, I think like Ray from Homegrown Natural Wonders, Odie that used to work for Sub. Uh, he has these seeds that don't even look like cannabis seeds. They're so big. It's like, and he grows outdoors. Yeah, and it's all indicative to the calyx that it was grown in, you know. Yeah, and I did side. So I did side by side. Like when I first started making seeds again after my little hiatus. I started in, I had some outdoors and some indoors, and the outdoor ones were the same as the indoors, the females. And the seeds that I harvested off them were completely different looking in the sense the outdoor ones were much bigger. And, and I think it's because of the, the like, I there was using Gavitas, like 1,100 watts on oh, yeah. them. And so because they're so strong, so the, the, it changes the bud density. Yeah. And so that puts pressure on the seed so the seed doesn't get as big. Doesn't get anywhere near as big. Doesn't have the chance to spread out and get some some roundness or room so you started working in amsterdam over 10 years ago around 10 years yeah, ago. yeah about 10 years ago Yo, what's, what's up buddy how you been good uh yeah i think uh my first my first cannabis cup was uh, my first cannabis cup as a competitor was 2009 or 2010 i forget when our first award is i think our first award is from 2011 uh was that at the power zone? Yeah, that's yeah. where we were just talking about how it was in the power zone. The yeah, good old days of the power zone. zone. Yeah. Before we had that awesome raid at that uh, beautiful tennis court. That was uh, the last one. That was, uh, it wasn't was the, the official one last one for me, but, one. But, yeah. but it was my last one for a while. And then yeah, I didn't back that was me. an adventure. It's nothing like being raided by Dutch police. <laughs> and, the, and then they arrested Mila out of all people. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Ari and Mila out of jail for that. Well, because she was doing demonstration, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. She's in the middle of a demonstration. Classic. Well, that was a good time. That was an adventure. The, the, the changing of the guard, so to speak, from when they went from like sort of chill and relaxed over in Holland to super conservative. Mm -hmm. Like 2012 uh, was cool. That was like the last year of like Steve Hager and the Temple Dragons being part of it. And yeah, that was a sort of bitter, I would say bittersweet <laughs> moment there, you know, was yeah. it good or bad? Uh, the, the thing about the Cups back then, which was really cool in my opinion, was that it was every year. And so you had a whole year to kind of gear up for it. And, and, three and, and when it happened, it was really cool. But it was also still kind of hokey. But that hokiness came through as sort of like authentic, you know? Yeah, it, it, and then it, more like real. now they're maybe they're more efficient as far as like in more people, et cetera, et cetera. But, but the, if you have so many of them and you saturate your market, right. it's like how many cups can you really go to? And as a, as a company, it's really hard to pick and choose. I mean, you have the nightmare to... Think about every show. Is it going to be a winner or a loser? Is it a winner or is it a loser? And there's more losers than winners these days at these shows because we've saturated, you know? Yeah, well, they're doing cups so every other them. week. Cash grabs. <laughs> yeah. And they're, and they're doing it for like one-day events. I mean, Detroit, one-day event. I'm coming in Portland, one-day event. Colorado, 420, I think. Well, the just Portland announced. one, the Portland one is just an award show. It's not even an event. It's right. technically I mean, just an award show. They're just like, hey, and give they us just your announced weed and your money. Give us your $1,100 like, entry. Give us your money and your There's weed. There's no show, so you don't give get you a cup. $500 entries. We get to charge you the full price. Yeah. Well, you know, and that, and that was the problem is that like, uh, and also because when most people came to Europe, it was the double adventure. You know, not only were you judging a cannabis cup, but you're actually in another country, and so everybody was pumped up and stuff. But when you drive, like, you know, to Riverside, it's not, <laughs> not, not like, it's not got the same sort of flair to it, right? You're like, okay, this is going to be fucked. You know, there's no parking. Oh, we haven't thought about these. You know, like, there's crazy, like, lack of, of basic things. In Oklahoma, it was a disaster. You know, they didn't have water. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was like 107 Lines degrees, three hour wait. Parking was two miles from the from they the had place. To bus people in. People were in wheelchairs, wheelchair. Yeah, this was, for, this yeah, yeah, this this was just year. a few months ago. A couple it was like, ago. it was just like, my, I got I got stressed out calls from my friends who were like, "Can you get me in touch with anybody at high times? Because we have no water." And I could hear people like yelling in the background. I was like. Oh, dude, it's fire fest going on out there. You know what I mean? It was a proper, it was a proper disaster. But uh, also, yeah, yeah. I think the the future of that is going to be back to those three hundred to five hundred people events that are like you kind of get to talk to all of them and every hang out instead of like a couple thousand people or ten thousand people or twenty thousand because those those they just loses at a certain point. It's impossible to really judge it properly. Well, it's like a. Denver those two years or three years where there was a hundred thousand people at the yeah. show you know where it got and saturated. It was, it was uh, there was a I mean because I moved to Colorado in 2009 and I was really surprised for the first time in my life I'd actually like bet on the fucking right horse right because I was like oh this place it could get legal here you know and then all of a sudden hey fucking wreck weed all of a sudden we're like wow I'm in this spot after being in Amsterdam for so long and and but to see how they lost that whole gig due to bad organization, and, horrible organization, and like you can't, it's really hard to put a hundred thousand people anywhere and make them all happy. No, they had no structure to it. And, but then when you add dabbing to it, it just killed me. <laughs> like that was it. I was like, not enough tables, right? Not enough plugs, not enough tables, too many people passing not out, enough ambulances, not enough water going, and not around. enough water. You know, it's just not like a, again, recipe for disaster. High times, yeah. There you go. Well, they got in corporate too, and they're and they're getting their ass handed to them when it comes to like trying to get an IPO going and and trying to like think that that it's really like the culture is moving ahead faster. Uh, it's than even they, oh for sure. But they still have the opportunity to change and they do have it the right. Core. They have the core. They have the core. They have the name. Oh, they're lucky. They're lucky to be able to fall, but but it's. I the, just, the, the the written the magazines are dead. We know that. I yeah. mean that's like. A, a waste print of time. Media, print, a lot of print media is dead. It's yeah. yeah. It's and and then when you go, but when you go online with it, it's you, you got to be working nonstop. You know, you have to be working on those events, and they don't have a great track record when it comes to taking out permits and doing all these things. And that's one of the things when it comes to doing cannabis-related events. It's hard. Man. Right. It's one of the I've tried to do them for years, and in in Amsterdam, where you think it would be easy, it was even more hard because. 
they actually had rules, you know. So I had one year where I uh, let a Dutch guy do the to the marketing for me, and he just put out like on Reuters like we're gonna roll the world's biggest joint. It's gonna be 500 grams, right? And then within an hour, we had the cops contacting yeah, the us, going like, like you, know, you, yeah, you know we're gonna be there, right? And I'm like, yeah, but everybody's gonna put their own weed in. It's like, there's not gonna be one guy with 500 grams. And they were like, no, the minute it all goes into that one joint, it's illegal, and we're gonna raid you, you know? So I was like, shit, why the fuck did you tell them? You know, so the main, the whole, you gotta like just do it in these situations and, and then talk about it after. That's, that's my word of advice. Yeah, I mean, that whole system over there, like as far as their coffee shops and how they get weed, it's crazy. They're only allowed like what 500 grams at any one given time in yeah. the coffee shop, yeah. and most of them have a, most of the coffee shops have networks of guys on scooters that will deliver and run from the cops because they can't get pulled over, they'll get arrested. Yeah, it's not legal till it gets through the door. It's yeah. like a total cat and mouse game, and it's also the, the weirder one, which was. They now, because when I was there, it was not legal to sell space cake ever, but people still did. But now they actually have rules, but the rules are you have to be able to see the weed. So it's like, basically, you just have to make the worst edibles possible. Like, here you go, make the worst edibles, and then you can sell them. As long as people can see little flakes of weed in all of your products, you're like, oh, counterproductive in those things. Yeah. Right. And, and, and uh, so the, the funny thing about Holland, though, is it's like they're looking at us like, with a malice agape, like they just can't believe what's going on. And it's like, no, you guys had 25 years to do this and make this work. Way ahead but of everybody. you just never wanted to acknowledge the grower. And the grower is the most important part of the whole thing. Back in the day, it was pretty much you go to the guy, he grew, the, he grew weed, you got it from him, there you go. Very small window. Now it's you get it from a guy who has 20 guys growing for him and 15 guys trimming for him. And it goes through this. Uh, UV control after and gets handled seven times before it hands gets to you and then you, you wonder why it's not quite as good as it was when you got it from your friend, you know. Um, so the Dutch have been dealing with that for 20 plus years. That's why the weed was always like, meh, kind of mediocre, mediocre if, at best. Yeah. And occasionally you get a good batch, but that was because it was grown small by somebody, you know, a few pounds here and there. But uh, the minute you got any kind of consistency, but the whole point was they don't recognize growers it's not legal so you have to play this small grower cat and mouse kind of vibe thing or just have be totally criminal and not give a shit and rent huge warehouses and pay you know do the play that game but those people don't care that that's your classic n no care weed at all you know as you could tell yeah, the people are bringing stuff up from morocco and the stuff that came up from spain oh now spain is i mean if you go to europe and you don't it's go to Spanish spain now. and you're a cannabis lover then you're out of your mind because that's yeah. where it's yeah barcelona is the new amsterdam for sure oh yeah it's the heart and soul of cannabis in europe is there now it was it was in amsterdam for a long time but it wasn't again it wasn't the dutch people it was all the, the tourists it's all the same guys in barcelona that, that were yeah, in amsterdam now, yeah and now it's that, the weather's it's, nice yeah Food. Food is amazing. <laughs> Food's actually good. Food is amazing. Like, it's not yeah. bad in Holland if you go to the right spots, but for the most it's part... It's everything Holland's good. not in that it's sense. Good bland. weather, good food. Yeah, it's bland. People are sort of nice. They're nicer. Right now they're rioting like motherfuckers. Though, so. yeah. Oh, yeah, over in Spain? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, crazy. Stuff. People dying and stuff, yeah. Well, and that's the thing about... They're very passionate. <laughs> I can say that. So. <laughs> very passionate people. Very passionate. But in general, I mean, definitely when it comes to cannabis... It, it sits, it has a much more California vibe to it though too. When you're there, you actually, you can finish outdoor weed there in November, you know, you can't, Colorado is not, or sorry, uh, Amsterdam is not conducive to outdoor growing in no. almost any way, shape or form. There's a few pockets of places, but. Yeah, not even in greenhouses out there, can, do they really yeah. run off of natural light? It's all still supplemental over in, in Holland. That's where, I mean, literally, indoor growing came from Holland because of the lack of light, you know, so they... But they got all the water in the world. Yeah, you know, that's never been a problem. Got all the water in the world. But, you know, again, like, now you see how, uh, because we're growing on scale, it starts to look very similar, like, between the way that people grow in, in greenhouses. And, like, when I was there, I was always butting heads with these guys because I was ignorant and I was thinking, like, that the American way of growing was 
the right way. And at that time period, everybody was growing with air-cooled lights. And so you were like putting the lights right down on the plants and growing completely different. And everybody over there had 15 feet in the air. And I was like, ah, oh, you guys are crazy. You don't know what you're doing. You know? And so it was like this whole like change of, of technology. And now America's adopted the Dutch system and are doing it, I wouldn't say better because Dutch are very efficient. They can do it with less people and always make, they can always cut every corner because they don't give a shit. You know, they'll use a they'll use a automatic thing. Whereas I think we're still kind of, for the most part, trying to like create jobs. Yeah. <laughs> we're not trying to automate everything too much. Creating it's getting there, shit. but no. uh, for the most part, it's like the scale is. I think you still do better when you have more hands on anyway. It's uh, automation is great, but you still need people to take care of things. That's just the reality. But you need to have the human touch, the human hand, the the human interaction no matter what and in my honest opinion like I said automation is awesome because it makes things obviously that much more efficient mm -hmm. but the human touch the human hand yeah well I think there's things that should be automated and there's things that shouldn't be automated yeah, I agree like watering I, I totally love automated watering <laughs> uh, it's the greatest thing ever right. but, but, but my friends up in Seattle House of Cultivar those guys hand water and it's because for their model hand watering works they have 88 different cultivars at any one mm -hmm. given time in a 34 thousand square foot facility and you know that's a lot of hand watering but i think those type of things should definitely be automated i feel like you can control it better and the more you can control your variables when you're growing like large quantities uh you know and, and also repeating the same results like those things are important well plants appreciate the timing you know what i mean like you you realize when you try to do like if you've ever tried to save money by not like I don't need a timer I'll just turn it on and off every day at the right time you'll never do it it's like it's always going to be a minute here a minute there two minutes here five minutes here like for you to literally get it on the time every day is not happening right so so that's that's a fail and when it comes to watering even though you could be consistent depending on how you're growing like it's better to feed them less off, less amounts, but on a very consistent schedule and kind of let them go where they need to go and let them, adjust, like, instead of trying to baby every single plant, because, like, my mom's the worst. She, like, picks up every single plant, right, when she's doing it. Like, she'll go in and it takes her two hours to do what takes me, like, a half hour because I'm just kind of like, well, I'll go do it, come back, and if I see a missed a spot or whatever, I'll do it. But she'll, like, go in and pick up every single plant, double check, triple check, and water it just the right, perfect. You know, and it's not effective time-wise. It's great. They all look great. But that's what you do with your moms and your things that you're not. But when you're doing production, in a way, it's a lot nicer when you can just plug a dripper or, uh, you know, bottom, depending on your system, how you're going to feed it or bottom feed it or, uh, you know, uh, have it on a, a dosatron or whatever system you're going to be using. But you notice that, wow, they, they sure do produce way better when, when someone else is doing the time. Cause right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, like, if for making seeds, I prefer making seeds in a sterile environment. I use cocoa, which is more sterile than soil obviously but as far as for smoking i prefer like living soil you can't you can't beat the taste um salts are good and, and they're great for mass production uh and, and there's nothing wrong with it and for seed salts using salts as opposed to organics so like gh is pretty much salt based uh, yeah, GH, salt -based. hgv my friends in arizona are using hgv and they're crushing it um, Anything with a G or an H in it seems to be made out of salt right. these days. Salt, 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 salt <laughs> company. But, but, I mean, it is the most effective and it is easy, especially in a dosatron situation. Like, things like when you're automated, you kind of have to uh, fall into line. You can't, it's very hard to do organic uh, and have it automated beyond, you know, I, I think even with that, like when you're doing living soils and stuff, there's really no point of automating it because. Uh, well, Wrigley, your, your, your work schedules are a lot lower. Wrigley in Nevada has forty thousand square foot, uh, a forty thousand square foot facility of living soil. So yeah. they've scaled it, and that's great for them. I haven't, I haven't tried just the like product. Soak, they just have like soakers pictures. in there or something. Or, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, that's it's an interesting concept. I just and maybe maybe it's more beneficial for the plants, even making seeds. Maybe it's better. But in my results, I feel like I've gotten better results from using cocoa with seeds and using, you know, Netafem drippers. Uh, and I water several times a day and I keep it real simple. 
Yeah, seven times, three minutes maybe. Yeah. Four minutes max. D depending on how big a pot. I've grown in as small as one gallon and 12 plants per 600. Yeah. Just uh, more water. I, yeah. You just more water, water all the time. And, and, you're, and, and they dry out. Yeah. So you ever use uh, the charcoal biopots? They no. come, so it's cocoa, and they come in these blocks, and they have bags, and then you hydrate them, and they spring up. That's cool. And uh, you can transplant one bag right to the next, so you can use the... That's convenient. Yeah, the one liter will go in like a two-gallon, super easy. And for making seeds, it's super simple because you can and I, imagine I like, a smaller I like the, area. Uh, I like from uh, Nick Droz's uh, pyramids. You've seen, you've seen those, right? Yeah. The pyramid uh, pots. Oh, yeah. Totally. Those, those, those are, are badass. Those are really good. And that's the thing is when you're growing on scale, um, it's all about consistency. It's about trying to do things. It's, you kind of have to get real boring if you want it because you can't start making like adjustments. You have to make everything very linear. Uh, you want your lighting schedule to be like, like there's, there's no point of like turning bulbs in different directions to try to fill in gaps. I mean, you get a, all those old <laughs> ways of thinking like, I'm gonna run a couple over this way and a couple over here. And it's like, no, no, once you have, uh, once you start growing anything that, that's especially custom built and or, you know, uh, you know, when you're talking 40, 50, 60,000 square foot facilities, it's, uh, you know, Kind of, kind of boring because it's got. To, they all start to become very yeah. homogenized. It's you know? all CAD, exactly, yeah. and it's all uh, rolling tables. Yeah, SOPs, <laughs> SOPs. <laughs> SOPs all day. Hey, yeah, exactly. what's your SOP like? Oh, yeah. it's fifty it's, pages. Have right, fun. and you know, you start to see it when you tour all these facilities. You start to go like, yep, it's like. Unfortunately, like I, I, my my thing that I loved back in the day, especially when when people were a little bit more creative, was that you would find like a nugget at every grow. Like there'd be like one guy who just, you know, filled reservoirs every day for like seven years and he came up with the smartest way to like never fuck up and like it's just like, oh yeah, I went to Home Depot and I got this thing and I put it in there. You're like, oh well, my so God, well. genius. It's because those people did it every day, you know what day I mean? And day. now the problem, it takes a lot of that creativity away because if they're fertigating with Dosatron, you pretty much they have them under contract or you have Argus, or you have another one of these big oh, yeah. companies, oh, yeah. and then you're a slave to that. It's like, it's like driving a Tesla. It's like, you're not gonna go home and fix that thing. I'm sorry, you're, if your car bricks up, call Tesla, and they'll come and tell it. You know? And that's kind of where a lot of the grows are getting. Oh. See you guys, thanks man. That's where a lot of the grows are, are, are kind of going towards where they're, it's just literally, everything's under contract. Plus people are, are as you noticed, uh, the next few years of this industry are going to be a lot of litigation because a lot of people are putting a lot of energy and money into something and then figuring out that it's totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just not like, right. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't. That was a big waste of. Oh, you mean we have to tear it out? And yeah, seven hundred thousand dollars later, someone's heads heads are going to roll. You know, that's all you see now in this industry. So, uh, I think the big winners are going to be lawyers in the next few years. You know, but yeah, I mean, you guys <laughs> were talking about it earlier with all the hemp stuff. It's like a couple friends of mine even. I think they had, I think it was about 15 acres, I mean, thousands of pounds that this came out state of Kentucky had to completely and utter just bulldoze. Came in hot. Yeah. yeah they paid so a many... dollar a seed straight up. Dude, Doesn't and... matter. 100,000 seeds, 200,000 seeds, a buck a seed. And it's yeah, like, yeah. these are hemp seeds we're talking about. And people complain about us selling TH seeds. Yeah. You know, TH, no offense, but oh. no, no pun, <laughs> but yeah, THC th seeds, you know. Uh, you know, and that's the situation, or it's yeah. it's kind of flabbergasting to see where, yeah, they put six, seven hundred thousand dollars in from a company who said, oh no, this is actually this. Here's a COA, and then yeah. their COA was full of shit. And, well, yeah. this, there was a point in time was last year where clean. was that one plant that they yeah. tested that happened to be the right one. Yeah, there was a point in time at last year when, if you put in like a COA into like Google search, there was like, bam, there'd be like. 50 of them, right? And then you'd recognize, like, you'd be like, oh, I just saw that one yesterday. And, like, literally, it's like someone would be in the parking lot, you know, oh, make a COA real quick. And then, so the same COAs were going around for nine different types yeah. of seed that were nothing to do with those COAs at all. You know same I mean? thing with SOPs. Like, the, the year ago, the SOPs. Three letters. They Don't trust out. three letter things. They're bad. Everyone's so using, like, once, boilerplate SOPs. It's been broken SOPs. down into three letters. Yeah. It's usually a bad situation. As you know. As you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Come on, James. Jump in there. Jump in. SHN. Uh, no. SOPs, we're talking your language now. We're talking... I actually erased all our SOPs, and now we use a program called Trainial. It's a lot better. 
Wouldn't it well, be you, you're, you, you are in the, the, the crazy world of, of uh, SEOs and internet positioning and all that. I mean, it's one of those God. things that, that I, I don't really feel very uh, sorry. Oh, I do feel sorry, but I don't ever like envy anybody's position because I know how hard that is. Is like yeah, uh, no, it's, it's the bane of my existence, websites. It's uh, just trying to keep them up, trying to keep them going, working um, uh, <laughs> security-wise, making sure we're secure because we get... Uh, randomly, hundred thousand tax a day. So, um, I mean, you got closed. Your your account got shut down more <clears throat> times, like probably like seventeen two. time Instagram shut down. Yeah. Now we, now we have the most boring Instagram account ever. It just we, as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as we put something up, we take it down twenty four hours because that's the only way we can keep it up. Every time we get to ten thousand, twenty thousand, boom, it shut us down seventeen times. Like we were running out of names. To yeah. name shit, we're like, we're like, what else do you call yourself? But, right. Yeah, um, people just uh, they would just report us, and that's and that's like the genocide of cannabis, of cannabis, if you will. They keep they keep cutting down everybody's YouTube YouTube accounts and and all these all these uh, Instagram accounts. You, people will forget about what people went through, and and I don't know how many of you guys have all your your pictures printed out and have hard copies of them, but majority of them up there on Instagram. If they delete your account, that's your history. And people don't remember no. like what people had to go yeah. through and what they did. And, and you know, it's like when IC Mag got deleted, everybody's grow tips that they did, yeah, all that companies. history all went away. So we've got a form opened up on C on C T now. So all the, all my breeders have the ability to go in there. They have a form to tell them its own separate server that's hosted in Amsterdam, it's really secure. Um, but uh, everybody's able to use it. So you have your own room. You can do the facts. You can ask him about his strains. You can ask him, talk to the breeder one on one and get the information from them. So is it hosted by Excess for All by any chance? Yes, it is. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. No, because Excess. They were like the original guys in Holland who did everything. Like anything uh -huh. shady back in the day, it was always Excess <laughs> for All. I was like, well, okay, we it was in the same building as them. Uh, but actually, that's, that kind of swings it around to uh, when I heard that Swerve was going to join us, I was like, oh, okay, well, interesting enough, I remember the show that you came, and I remember that it was funny because, like, we didn't actually talk during that show because we were both busy doing our own things, and then later there was this kind of like, yeah, I don't know, I think Adam doesn't like me or something like that, and that's just kind of how the industry rolled, but it wasn't even that. I think it was a situation of that I recognized at that time because I had heard your name, and I think you were one of the first guys... Uh, in my opinion, because uh, it wasn't that, I mean, there was people selling online, but there wasn't a lot of people uh, putting their name out there yet that kind of like put their face behind it, I think. And so I, I think I kind of was curious at the time because I felt like you were part of that next generation of breeders yeah. coming up. And it, not as an insult, but it was like, I was like, oh, see? He's got a little system because he's like <laughs> online high fiving himself every five minutes. But and him, with his, with his home crew, yeah. you know, with his homeboys, like, like, blah, blah, blah. but we were actually creating waves that I was mm -hmm. seeing in Amsterdam just by the name. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I give you definitely kudos for that because that was also like, as you see, the hustle has gotten fierce, but it's also kind of like ridiculous too because like, the quality of the camera that we have in our phones is, oh, is so much is, better is than the nuts. Stuff that we you know had what I mean? Then. Like back in the day, <laughs> to get a photo of your cannabis, to was get such a macro a of your cannabis back in the day. Yeah, like oh, I was trying so all the time to like, like imagining. Oh, imagine if you could. And you know, literally, like the other day, I got one of those little tiny scope things, and I was like, "You see where we're at now? It's like you just click, click it on your phone. Now you got a 400, you know, times zoom. You can take photos, videos." And I'm like thinking to myself, like, "Man, we were like struggling. I was like trying every angle to make things work, but also the internet was sort of like, I grew up in a generation that was kind of like we didn't take, we didn't like." We're Generation X, so we didn't really like jump to it as much yeah. as the next generation, which definitely jumped to it. And I think now it's, it is it like if it's like like he was saying, if your Instagram account gets deleted, you have no you yeah, have no screwed. existence, and it's like I feel like that's kind of uh, it shows you a little bit of where the sales it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know? And you can't smell the weed, right? You can't smoke the weed. You can see the weed. There's some awesome photos. And like I was saying, the cameras are as good as a SLR camera was oh, back Oh, they can in, make the weed look way better than it is, for sure. Yeah, and some people just have a really good eye, right? They could like, bam. All that Avid and Eagle 20 doesn't come up on film. Right? But, so what's your situation now? Like, you're kind of bringing... 
you're kind of bringing things back online. Yeah, keeping it going. You know, we've been uh, just kind of been lucky, unfortunately. Uh, you know, like most in this industry, we hit a minor road bump <laughs> called the police department, and nice. then um, they won for a split second. But thankfully, we have solid lawyers, and they took care of everything for us. And uh, we managed to mitigate our, our losses, and we've been just direct sales as well as our, our wholesale over in, in Europe and whatnot. Um, we faded away from Europe for a minute, but we've been hitting uh, the states pretty hard. We're hopefully about to announce once everything's locked down and signed, you know, a uh, tri-state deal bringing us to Nevada, Arizona, and California legally. Which would be kind of cool to, to be able to embark on that one because we've been fighting for Nevada for since my now defunct partnership with MJ Amer MMJ America in Colorado. Uh, otherwise, yeah, man, just keeping it going, like you know, like oh yeah, that's yeah, true, that's true. Now that you say that, now that you say that, I'm like, oh yeah, you know? Salazar, I remember oh, that? Oh yeah, you gotta remember good old. Good I remember, old Jake I remember being in, in his office. <laughs> probably a, a month or two after you were there yeah. and, and I think and I, and I was wondering how that and that's a, a classic example of oh. of how the 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 industry kind of gobbles up talent Just takes and, it eats it up takes what they want from you and yeah spits you out well he was so he was you. A, you were dealing with a guy like literally a uh, 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 loan shark, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that was his, that's what yeah. he did for a living yeah. so I was like okay well I guess I know where we're at here yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So you're, so that that actually uh, the whole vault thing just sort of. Yeah, the whole vault thing. They. Uh, <laughs> that um, when it came down to finances, I got a beautiful letter from their lawyer and said we appreciate all the genetics that you did for us, all the breeding that you did for us, everything basically that you did for us. But uh, have a great day. Wow. Because you can't be a part of it anymore. And is that because of the out of state yeah, situation? Because yeah. of the out of state thing, and they didn't want to. They didn't want to do things the opposite side, which was the licensing way, yeah. um, which would have been able to allow us to retain the control of the IP. Which is one thing that, after I realized and learned off of that one, was and has been my main focus and pitch is intellectual property. People forget about the IP part and about the fact of, like we're all talking, when you work with these major corporations now, that's what I refer to them as, you know, these huge farms that can buy you 10 times over and you do all of their genetics for them. And well, that's their IP now and you forget that and don't realize it. You've yeah. just lost your legs. Yeah, no, it's 100, I mean, I the, the best deal you can do as a grower is become like a decent percentage owner that makes it yeah. so that what you're doing is for the for the bigger for the greater good yeah because if you're trying to come in and, and exactly what you're saying like the minute you bring because by law when you bring genetics into their facility it's their thing that, it's that is, there's no way that you can argue that unless you write it into your contract and even somehow if you do that, but even though, if you do you're the one that broke the law yeah. so you're writing yourself out oh yeah i ship plants across the country Oh, that's against the law. ISO. We got an ISO right there. Boom. <laughs> like, ISO. What? You can't say that, you know, when you're trying to battle them in the, in the court of law. Yeah. So, yeah, they're going to win every time. Yeah. It's, it's uh, been definitely, tr you know, proven over and over again. I mean, that's one of the things that's the hardest part as a, uh, as a grower, breeder in the industry. When I first came back to America, I was like, convinced that you know i was like oh this is going to be you know no problem and i just like hit roadblock after roadblock and it always came down to partnerships based on the you know if unless you were working with somebody that was 100 percent the owner financer and all of the above there's always that like oh by the way so and so doesn't like this that or the other and all of a sudden you know the all all deals are off and it really the it's it's sad but you know when you bring genetics a living thing like that, the minute that they can replicate it, they're going to do it, and you know that's going to happen, so you have to always anticipate that. And then when it comes to, like I said, you know, if you get locked out, yeah. Can't yeah, it's really it. hard to, to just, <laughs> recourse is hard. Yeah. So, so what are you guys' thoughts on material transfer agreements? Basically saying that you're, if you sell people seeds, that they're not going to be breeding with them. It's impossible to... Do anything with it's you like, can't. You can't. It's like the it's like the Crawford brothers. This, right this, now, this yeah, year. This, there's a good example where they got real. Oh. Everybody, anybody who tries it, it doesn't work. The same thing with um, 
even with Milo from Big Buddha. All the big hemp companies. So, are doing so Big it right Buddha, now. Big Buddha tried to. Uh, he sent letters of you know to anybody using any cheese Jeez. of any type, right? And I even just I, I told him I was like, dude, I'm doing fromage. It's a cheese uh, sage cross. What are you gonna do about it, right? You know what I mean? It's like nothing. Just you know, it's just him trying, and like it's one of those situations where I was like, well, that didn't really. I think it hurt your image in the industry more than helped it because we're kind of all in it to. Like we know Milo and Big Buddha, even though they didn't create it, they just, I, it's like it wasn't even a creation of theirs. But I'll give it to they them. It to they see. promoted it. They got it yeah. out there. It's just cool. Just like me. And but they genetics. don't. But when you start to say like anything cheese related, which now you're stepping into a whole other industry yeah. too. So it's like what? So now none of us can say, you know, anything is like cheese. Cheddar. Like, come on now. You know yeah. we were saying we were using people were. It's amazing that it didn't get used as a name for cannabis a lot earlier. I just made my opinion. It was one of those like, oh, Jesus, why didn't we? We lived in Holland. Why didn't we? Jesus. Why, why were we not thinking of right. this? You know, we we're the king of puns. It was the easiest. Okay. It was would have been the easiest strain. Yeah. But in general, I think, uh, you know, the, we're like we were saying earlier. It's really you can do all. You should trademark your stuff if you really are confident that you're the first person to do it, and you have something super original and it seems to be valuable. It's a good idea. It's not very enforceable, and you may waste well, hemp a lot. Hemp is of enforceable, I think. I think you could probably, as a big hemp well, company making seeds, you could probably enforce it to a degree. Hemp is more enforceable because it's recognized by yeah. the federal well, government. Either way, they're they're all still enforceable. Um, yeah. My patent and trademark attorney, like he's very much so explained to us how you can enforce it. But it comes down to the fact, are you going to spend $15,000 to enforce you from using something? Yep. You're not going to spend that kind of money. You're not going to waste that money. It's the fact. Yeah. You're, it's the truth. Right. So, yeah. But if well, somebody's well, bought no. a Well, the thing is, you're, you're always losing when you... I feel like whenever you're on the attack, like say you're the guy who's out there attacking, you're... You're you're looking like an asshole. You're first damaging of all, your brand, and you're also not going to win. Really, no. you might get the guy to like you know change the name if he's smart, which you know is not a big deal for the most part. But your genetics are already compromised at that point, and that's the way that people a lot of times don't get it. They're like, you know, to me it's the names. Okay, that's one thing, and names are actually easier to to protect because yeah. it's a name. Sure. Genetics, no. There's well, not, unless you've done DNA yet. snippets and you have actual markers on them, you're not going to be You able have to, to have them. a genetically modified plant to, to be able to protect it as a patent of the situation. You can't yeah, just protect a, so I think a, a cultivar. With it's the not. material transfer agreement, that just states that you're not going to breed with their genetics. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and again, that's, that's I think, so unenforceable. So you think that they're not going to breed with your genetics? <laughs> what happens if they... <laughs> I what, mean... But, well, here, here's I think, the question, okay? Well, here's the question to that. What happens if they have a Hermy and all of a sudden their whole room's pollinated? Now they have shit tons of seeds. What are they supposed to do? Throw them away? Yeah, I test mine I guess for by stress. So I, that, I'm not, yeah, I know, I understand but, what you're saying. Because sure. that's the same ploy as Monsanto. It's, it's a tough one. Because if they trademark markers within their. Yeah, that's the uh, thing they generate. Let's say I spend $100,000 worth of research and I'm selling these seeds for a dollar seed and I sell them to somebody, they, they buy $50,000 worth of seed, then they replicate it and they're selling the same exact seed, they're S1 ing it or whatever. Yeah. Well, and, no. Again, and, uh, I think as far as ethics, it's I think you're. On, I think wise, the only way you can protect yourself is if you did put those markers wise. in, That's out the case in which cost industry. a bunch of money. So yeah. you have to do that, and you have to. That's the only way. Otherwise, there'd be like no, no way. Yeah. In so my opinion. Oh. Uh, uh, I could tell you. you I, could, I could tell you. Um, I could. I could give you a very strong company in Oregon not to go with because they'll. They'll, they'll, they'll give you nothing but THC. Yeah. THC. The real you know, THC. You'll get nothing but not THC. Nothing but it. Point. Nothing but THC. That's it. Okay. And it's hemp, but it's not. So hemp. spectrum, the why? What's a good strain to look for? I think there's a lot of good hemp Spectrum's strains good. out there. Yeah. Cherry wine's good. No, Cherry spectrum, blossom. The wine, yeah, I mean, I've seen some. I've seen. I've seen a lot of. It depends on your. It depends where you're located too. Like some things, like the T1 this year worked really well in Colorado, and last year, not so great. So. Oh. Ah. No, no, she was. She was trying to like crop me. I know, but I completely agree. I mean, sometimes so, flowering on hemp is yeah. too long. You never know. Yeah. Like, three. Yeah. Doctor Who. 
hardly who. Well, you know the thing too. Like I think it makes the pro- people flower that are flowering hemp too long or a week too long go above a point three level. So it's not the hemp level on that part. So yeah, you, but you can't well, control you can that get as full a grower. Term hemp that doesn't get hot though. Yeah, that, and that's what we're working on. Like if you Which compare it to the not hot hemp. <laughs> the, that's like well, I'm trying to get the inside lane. Yeah. What's yeah. not hot? What's not I'm hot? So it's back so we have, but so we if you look at cherry wine, cherry wine for example, there's so many different phenotypes of cherry wine, but there are phenotypes that do not go above a point three. But I mean, I feel like that's the same about the Electra hemp that you're sure. talking about. That's mm-hmm. the most common hemp out on the strain right now in the product for a CBD joint. So it makes no sense. If people are flowering that same hemp at home and it's a week or two too long, I mean, it's above that point three, especially if they're going through it. We just haven't fully figured it out. The tomato industry has figured out tomatoes over the last... 50 years using them as an example we're just and starting. we're just scratching the surface of this stuff i mean we're gonna have Which hemp plants that have zero t- a brand new industry i mean look yeah, at it Jen this canna way. has yeah. a zero thc that comes out yeah. zero the whole time so it's gen canna from kentucky oh i mean we there's other you can also spray I, your plants with stuff have, that'll prevent yeah, it from we have i'm gonna spray with sugar but, water and have but it the question is, yeah. is it's it's like the CBG side of the fence of people that are specialized in CBG. It's like and, and you, you can, have to find that one cultivar and really replicate the absolute yeah. shit out of that somehow. Yeah. And that's I the guess hardest what we're part. saying is and also where, flowering to times. Look, where do we look to for the future of the CBD hemp? Give it about two years and then you'll yeah, be able to well, figure it out. Right is, now, so. It's just well, just like, don't I mean, put all your eggs in one basket with any, anything yeah, right now. Like be more, oh, sorry. I was going to say, just, just like, yeah. you know, take into account that if you run hot and you have one strain in the field, then you've got to take down that whole thing. So think along the line of carp, carp, uh, compartmentalizing your situation and having maybe different fields doing different things and taking, you know, because the problem is it's also if you're trying to grow smokable hemp or you're trying to grow biomass. If you're trying to grow biomass or if you're trying to grow other cannabinoids besides CBD, there's other flower. You can take stuff way earlier to guarantee that you're not going to have it and don't try to like ride that line because there's a lot of times, you know, we're not trying to get the same end result unless you are trying to get smokable flower. And if you're trying to get a smokable flower, I would just do, I would do clone only in greenhouses. That way I know exactly what's going on in there. Real deal stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. Even though I love seeds, even though I love seeds, (laughs) it's just be safer right now. But the clone still has to come from a seed. It's the wild But you can can get it right to the mark. You you need to know your breeder and know your source. Nine or something, you know, so you're just be asking my breeder and my source is right here. But I mean, you also have to look at Willie G, you know the Willie G. No. And I think, you know, right now, like, CBG is a big uh, cannabinoid that always, you know, it followed the same trend as CBD as far as a kilo of CBD th- two years ago was worth about 20000 right? And now it's worth about 2200 or 2000 let's say. Yeah. That's 10 times drop in two years. CBG was 60000 last year, and it's already $20,000. it will be 10000 It's going to drop yeah. just like everything else. And so everybody keeps like, oh, what's the next yeah, one? You know, and, how to yeah, I mean, these guys in Oregon now have a CBD cultivar that is, you know, tests between 9 and 15%. Which is what strain? Electra? Electra? Uh-uh. Tested well, I mean, 30%? No. 30%? Electra? I mean, like our BOAX... Our Boax M C is eighteen percent, sixteen percent. Yeah, like seventeen, eighteen seems yeah. to be like the kind of coasting yeah. line for a lot of this stuff. There's yeah. some little pops here and there, but I don't yeah. know, I never heard thirty percent myself either. No. I've yeah. never 30% seen thirty percent is when you see the THC. But then you're yeah, like, you're probably uh, yeah. at that point I would imagine you are yeah. over the Viagra line. Viagra for in, C B D. But well, it's also, interesting. My dick's hard. So, so they're able to convert from C B D now. That was a joke. <laughs> That was a joke. You repeat the joke? Yeah. Right. You don't want to do it. Uh, so yeah. CBD basically is a precursor, and you can convert that to, into other cannabinoids. And CBD can now be converted to THC using enzymes. So technically, ship, world shipping for cannabis is no longer an issue. You, you ship it as hemp, as CBD. Well, well, I was going to say it's kind of funny because you, as you're saying that, there's enzymes you can put on the plant in the field and completely knock out THC also. Right. There's guys, we are working on, there's a group in, in Hawaii right now, and they claim to, they're out of Oregon, but now they're in Hawaii, because the thing is, the, the, all around the, like anywhere that's got really good growing conditions, it's very hard to keep your shit below 
like 1%, yeah. you know what I mean? It just wants to spike because of the conditions being so perfect. So Hawaii had a, the few people that actually had licenses, most of them ran hot last year too, just like a lot of places. So the, yeah, the, so they're testing that there and that's a game changer in itself because you could take a straight up THC strain and then in the field hit it hard and have all those terps but not have any uh, THC on the final product. So there's, there's, I think we're going to come up, just like anything, we're going to kind of slip our way around as much as we can. And uh, just the ability to grow on the scale that we're finally able to grow on just creates more uh, bigger ideas and bigger, you know, bigger moves that we can hopefully do and stay one step ahead. Did we're, you? we're just scratching the surface of all this stuff. Right. It's like we're just learning how to cultivate properly and how to breed properly right. and use marker assisted breeding. I'm, I, you know, I believe GMO has its place potential. I, I compare it to like brain surgery, how if you're, they were scared of brain surgery when people started doing it and GMO might not be the solution. We probably, in, who knows if we'll even have to do it in our lifetime. I mean, we can use analytical driven breeding and marker driven breeding without actually editing the genes. But, uh, I mean, we're just scratching the surface of all this stuff now. We're, like, Dedi Miri out of Israel, he's doing a lot of clinical research. He's the number one cancer clinical research scientist in the world, and he's comparing it all with uh, different cannabinoid profiles and chemotyping, which is basically going in and looking at the chemical expression of the plant and how it works with people's bodies. And we're just, you know, he discovered all these receptors. Before we only had two, they thought we had CB1 and CB2 receptors. Now from CB1 and CB2 receptors, they have 28 other like nuclear receptors in our body that actually interact with cannabinoids. And so, and that's just the, you know, flavonoids is a whole other thing that we really don't talk about, but that is what they believe will help cure pancreatic cancer. And so even from a medical side, we're just really scratching the surface of what's possible. 10 years from now, we'll have a lot more of it figured out, but I, I still don't believe we'll have it all figured out. Uh, there's no way, because they would, just like you're saying, 10 years ago, it was as, as illegal as it can get. You know, yeah. there wasn't clinical trials, there wasn't actual labs that were testing. I mean, there were, but they were just starting out, you know? Well, universities, I mean, that's where it gets, that's where it's really interesting because, you know, they're getting grants to study something that should have been studied a lot in the last, I mean, with, for the last 75 years, we've been sort of only studying it on a negative, uh, you know, looking for negative results, not even like <clears throat> wanting positive results. No. And now it's pretty interesting for, if you think about like a young kid going into college and he has an option to really take cannabis on a next level serious from a, from a biological point of view. And, and I think they're going to have, you know, think about the, the 50,000 ways that they already knew what to use hemp for and then add into that also these high cannabinoid plants which nobody was really I mean they were out there but nobody was really focusing on them so now we have a whole arsenal of uh, potential uh, compounds coming out of that yeah. that which are just can lead to cures well that are going to be like epically yeah. you know beyond anything that we're even comprehending when it comes to like when you see uh, how simple some of the things like with hemp for instance because also that's again like with hemp cannabis being it's the same thing and imagine when we grow like the ultimate plant which is a high THC high CBD high fiber content high you know uh, cellulose content everything of all the above like oh and it, it has all the other cannabinoids in it yeah. Yeah. All, and it grows 15 feet tall and it does mm -hmm. you know there's all these things we haven't even Fast. because we're still trying to separate Boy, the differences but they're all in there, and so there, there's a pretty exciting, like the next 10 years are going to be awesome. There's going to be, finally, when people get over the whole CBD craze, they're going to get more into bioplastics, and, you know, because that's something that I think is the next big problem in, 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 you know, in the world, is everyone's going to be on the same tip where it's like, yeah, this plastic situation is getting a little out of control. What else can we use? And, you know, Legos has already said that they're going to, Replace yeah, all of their Legos with Levi's hemp, hemp bioplastic by 2030, Amazing. and that's like, you know, that's huge right there when you think about a company like that. So, it, that's kind of where I'm excited. Okay. Even, okay. you know, as much as I'm excited about cannabis in general, that whole so next generation so of like, of oh, the house is built out of it, and the car is driving on it, and all of you know, that's that's where we're going to be going yeah, towards. I think. Except yeah. for you, James. Yeah, so for me. <laughs> You'll be fighting with your merchant account, guys. Yeah, still. 
Yeah, but commercial people should be hitting you guys up, no? I mean, it, right? I mean, commercial growers and commercial farms are contacting, I would assume, you, James, for bulk seed and for seed, right? Yeah. They, I mean, it's happening. They do, but I don't... Uh, I've stayed away from bulk hemp seeds just for that very okay. reason because uh, cherry wine was hot and I don't want to be responsible for somebody's losing their crop on my ass. Right? Yeah. So I wasn't. I wasn't. I haven't. I, w I didn't step into that field. It wasn't my expertise. And I, it's one of those things. I sell something. I come back up and I can see results and I see paperwork and I do my my damnedest to get to the bottom of things. And that organ company you speak of, I've I've talked with them and, and I almost <laughs> you dealt know who with I'm them. talking about. Yeah. And 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 I just I I, I never wanted that on my conscience that yeah. I caused somebody their field to get tossed so that's crazy I've, I've never sold them for that reason so we've, yeah. we've stayed out of that we, we do sell bulk film stock and bulk other seeds but we, we haven't gotten into hemp seeds just because i've got i've got one company i work with and they've got three years with the coas so he's been doing it for a long time in maine um that does the, that's the best coast guy it's best coast genetics best coast. he uses an, an auto box strain beacon's good kind of like Beacon's you were speaking good. of yeah, like, yeah. so What's but um like <laughs> Yeah, the boa, uh, the box, Bill, the yeah. Bill Soil's got a hemp seed line that's coming out, right? And I mean, all of us have the, hemp seed lines. It's just yeah, you the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, if, I mean if, me if personally, have, we got like seven hemp seed lines. You know, we have a, literally seven different varietals that we we put out in hemp. We have COAs for all of it, but no, no boax. Um, Electra. Like auto autos are going to be autos amazing. Autos are just coming out. You know, the auto hemp's are, yeah. they have a long ways to go. But just like how. So there's two autos. autos. There's OTTO, which is yeah. an auto box it's strain. Auto itself. Yeah, no, 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 which, and then there's an auto as far as an auto, auto flower. flower. Auto yeah. flower so is the auto, shit. Got to watch out. It has a lot of potential. Like, we haven't figured it out but completely. But do you really yet. want like a little auto flower hemp plant? Yeah, and then you, what you do is you plant. Then you're harvesting in like July. And then you plant like early. yeah, you get three harvests per year. Yeah, you plant earlier. twenty thousand per not even you, you can plant ten thousand per acre, and so you plant more. But the thing is, is we're working on getting these CBD level higher. That's the big thing is getting because right now auto flowers are somewhere between five and ten percent for CBD, and I think that's going to evolve into eighteen to twenty percent CBD in the future. But it's going to require a lot of breeding, a lot, a lot of selection. A lot of selection, like a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of money. Testing. I but it, I, I totally believe it's possible. Because I, I saw auto flowers in 2012. I went and saw Olier's auto flowers in Spain, and uh, they sucked. They were really, they were, they were this tall. Lower and, and, and yeah, they were, well, so the further away you get from Ruralis, the better it gets. And the stuff that's auto flower now is unbelievable. And you're getting stuff that tests high 20s. Uh, what, like, that has good festo. flavor. Green, stuff green I'm light, doing festo. with Mephisto. With, so, uh, Buddha's doing some good stuff for sure. Mephisto is killing Mephisto. it. Um, Mephisto. Mephisto for sure. But even Fast the stuff buds. I'm doing with uh, with my buddy Nick. Green so light. open source. We're doing stuff together. Okay. So we're, we're crushing some autoflowers. And we're testing really high. You know, we're just testing stuff in the 20s with our autoflowers. And the deal is, is it's not right for everybody. It's not right for every situation. But... For people that want to get multiple harvests in a year that are willing to invest in 15 to 20,000 seeds per acre, that might be the ideal solution. You know, it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. Yeah. It's an option. It's an option. It's an option. It's the guy in Alaska who needs it. Yeah. He needs it. Yeah, there's a lot of situations that actually need it, though, too, where it's just like they're... they're you can't rely on the... Like, especially bringing in a cultivar that's never grown in a region. Like, Colorado's got some pretty... Uh, pretty intense weather, weather and so things. people came in and grew. Uh, I went to one farm that had uh, 16 pivots. Each pivot was 240 acres, so we're talking about 1,800 acres of hemp, all within a few. You know, is a 15 and a half square mile area, just packed. And, and but next door to them was another 2,000 acres of guys who were growing industrial hemp, and they were just letting stuff just blow across the thing. So it was like, wow, you guys are. Not okay. growing any smokable hemp here. I'm sorry. Everything is seeded, and they couldn't. They had a hard time taking that one. But in general, it's just you know, uh, yeah, the scale that people are growing now, uh, there's tsunamis of pollen flying around. So, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. We can talk about it real quick. I got I got to fly to the Caribbean for work. He's got to get a quick, a quick tough fly. fly. This yeah, is so a, the co this is a collab. This is our collab that we're doing together. So these are some of the samples that were 
grown and uh, for Adam to try out. You yeah. know, we, we basically hard I, job. I made these seeds a year ago. Yeah, it's a tough job, right? <laughs> Somebody's got to smoke them all. And uh, I, I basically make stuff and I make sure it's tested before it's ever released. So I want it grown out uh, by multiple people. We do COAs, we do everything and compare. So yeah, so ours, it's a sage and sour. I was talking about it earlier, how I use three males instead of one. The master, uh, the master sage, or is this the regular No, it's sage and sour. Sage and sour. Sage, okay. sage and sour. So sage and sour, the first time I saw it was at Harborside in maybe 2008. And I really fell in love with it. I like sours. So my loud seeds that me and my friends started, it was based on sour diesel, like love sour. And yeah. so sage and sour was this kind of like sour. It has this, the, the, the fino they had was, it was a little more wispy, but it was like super greasy and it grew big. It didn't yield as good as sour or anything like that, but the taste was like lemon funk with the, it, and I fell in love with it. It, it. It's like that lemon funk with a little bit of that sage in there. And it, it, so Adam and I kind of, I, I decided I was gonna make seeds and I talked to Adam about doing a collab. And so I wanted to do some interesting crosses with it and I wanted to give people the most uh, availability for the F1s for selections of their own. And so like this one right here, this is an LA antidote from FC Genetics from our buddy at FC. I got his uh, 20 to one. It's your buddy that I met that I got some clones off. <laughs> and he, he yeah, he's, he has some good stuff. But yeah, so this was his LA antidote that he made and I put it on the Sage and Sour and it has some amazing. Let him, let him uh, yeah, check that catch, out. Catch some nose there. There's two phenos of it here. So we'll, we'll grow and we'll do selections. Like, uh, I went to Arizona and worked with the company out there, and we did selections on uh, starting with 1,000 seeds, narrowed it down to 120. From the 120, after we pulled out the males and the herms and everything else, we I selected like about 35, and they still, they're keeping the 120, but, like, we do analytics, we do smoking. You got to, yeah. the analytics don't tell the whole story. Smoke, no matter smoke, how much you want to, to believe do they do. Smoke analytics. So yeah, so the skush from Duke Diamond, uh, we put that on there, and that has like that old school skunk smell. And if you smell it, it smells skunk. just like cantaloupe. You get fresh cantaloupe on this. Mm -hmm. This so one's good. I like this one. That's very clean smelling. Like you're you're, you're living vicariously through our nose. Yeah, right. and you know if you guys want to smell these oh, afterwards, that's fine. If you so I did smell the, this. the GMO sage and sour. Right? This one's oh, got originally super many. skunky, yeah. super. Yeah. It's really just called this gym shoes because this stuff stinks. It has like that bo from this the, the Chem D. That's the winner. Yeah, this is uh, really? more, 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 more like it too. I got some phenos of that, and some came out lemony, some came out chemi. Uh, we got a little diversity with them. Yeah, and There's, I like I like the fact that. Um, you didn't pick a super dominant male either, so it's like this is all, all flavors represented in a sense here. Yeah, sometimes when you use a male that has a jack in it or something that's really dominant, it, it like makes that. the whole progeny, whatever you put it on, <laughs> smell and taste like that. Mac. And like yeah, for sure. Well, not the Mac one, but like if you were to reverse any of the other Macs yeah. that I've seen, they have a lot of that terpenaline and limonene. And yeah, yeah, the Mac one, amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah. So the Josh, Josh so the Josh D. Yeah, that, 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 you know, that's the original OG. Uh, but uh, those, I, I did some legend, and I did some of the Josh D, and they they all came out great. So where is the loud seeds on seeds right now? Or? There's uh, there's no more loud seeds right now. Yeah, we'll we'll a, you know we'll see what happens with loud seeds in the future. I have James Loud Genetics, okay. so you can get that. You can get Green Light Genetics is my collab with the Auto Flowers that's available on seeds here now. The collab that I'm doing with Adam is going to be available on Seeds here yeah. now. That's going to be our first THC. My purchase. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, Technically, it it's a safe master. It's been around for this so long. It's your <laughs> first purchase. <laughs> the package yeah, so the GMO Sage and Sour is super fire. And there's ones that kind of that lean towards the sage, but the ones that lean towards the GMO that have that structure and that BO armpit, you know, funk. That's the one. But yeah, thank you guys for having me. I gotta go. Amazing show. You guys kill I think you guys are gonna continue on. Oh, forever. We're yeah. gonna, we're, we're, I think we're going on. I think it's an after, after, after. It's an after, 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 after party.